Hey everyone, welcome to a new, uh, the next edition of Philip in the Cloud. Today we're going to be talking about speeding up pandas using Ibis and DuckDB. If you have any questions, put them in the chat. I'll see them as I'm typing. And, uh, and let's get started. <clears throat> so one of the features that we, that has kind of been a long time coming in Ibis is like the ability to actually you know, interact with pandas data frames in a more convenient way uh, than just firing up the pandas backend, adding some tables to a dictionary, and then kind of being, being you know, only being able to use them in the pandas backend. And so we've landed a, a feature that's going to be cut in the next uh, release of IBIS, which is happening this week, 3.2, where uh, you'll be able to use data frames kind of transparently in a few of the backends uh, that, that support it. So right now it's ClickHouse and DuckDB. Uh, that support that and you'll be able to use data frames kind of natively there and what I'm going to be demoing in this live stream is kind of how to use um, data frames uh, in IBIS using the standard IBIS API and basically getting all the benefits of, of kind of you know IBIS and, and uh, you know kind of with with those data frames so let's let's get started so imagine you have kind of a CSV file. I'm going to use the taxi trip data set here. I'm going to read in, um, well, I've already got this, uh, this data frame read in, but, um, you know, so one of the things we can do is I'll just, I'll just sort of do it again. I think I have one that's uncompressed. I'm going to use that one, uh, so that, um, well, let me find it. Where is it? There it is. Yellow trip data. I've got one month. Um, and I'm just going to read that in. It's going to take a second. And this is sort of a kind of a typical workflow you might see, right? We've got, um, you know, a bunch of stuff. We've got our data frame here, right? And we can, the, the new feature that uh, that you can do this with an IBIS is, is called mem table. And you just kind of throw a data frame into it, right? And I'm going to set IBIS inter, uh, option uh, interactive to false for the moment, just so you can see what it looks like. And, and you can see there's there's like this, this expression that just kind of stores the data frame, right? And we've got like about three and a half million rows. And let's see. So we've got three and a half million rows. We've got our data frame. And we've got an IBIS expression that we can just start kind of doing stuff with, right? So if we say... I don't know, um, you know, t dot vendor id dot count. You know, it's like, hopefully this works. Cool. It's like, cool. There's no non-null values there. Whereas if we say, I don't know, look at congestion surcharge, right? It's like mean. You know, execute. It's like okay, cool. Um, so let's turn on interactive mode so that we don't have to like keep looking at the expressions and typing execute. Cool. So we've got our interactive mode. We've got, you know, that thing going. We can look at the SQL. Boom. So we've got we've got this funky looking SQL. It's like sum of congestion surcharge from Ibis mem table one as TC. It's like, so what the heck is Ibis mem table one? Ibis mem table one is the name of a kind of a temporary view that that IBIS um, you know creates using d native facilities inside DuckDB to represent this in-memory table, and DuckDB can actually execute data uh, can execute SQL queries against an in-memory data frame, which is which is pretty nice, right? Because like it's gonna it's gonna give you all the niceties of of a modern you know fast analytics column store operating on your data frames, and in some cases this can lead to rather noticeable uh, performance improvements, you know, on the order of, you know, tw somewhere between 20 and 30x. It, it, we'll see that here in a bit, but basically kind of once you get into the 100 million row range, things start to, to start to add up with pandas and, and you'll be able to see the, the difference. And I'm, I'm going to be showing that here in a second. So all we did was just, we, we just sort of created this expression and then we, we started running IBIS expressions just on this data frame right away. So that's, that's a new feature may seem super obvious, but we hadn't done it until now. So um, yeah, look, look forward for that in the, in the 3.2 release. Um, so you can kind of do, 
the standard things, right? You can do t dot. I don't know what do we have. We have. Um, let's look at let's look at passenger counts. And you know, Ibis has a value count, so it sort of gives you the the group by information. And we see we've got some like somewhat ridiculous numbers going on here. Um, we've got things with you know seven, eight, and nine people um, in a taxi, which. I don't know of any taxi in New York. Uh, lived here for 20 years. I don't think I've ever seen a taxi that could hold nine people uh, safely. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And it looks like we've got four, nine, 14. So we've got like 27 rides that have seven or more people in them. That's kind of funny. Um, we've also got, at the lower end, we've got some rides with zero people in them. So that's kind of interesting. Like what the heck is going on there? And again, you can look at the SQL here and say, okay, what does that do? Well, it's passenger count, count star on Ibis Mem Table 2. It, it's two, it, it's Ibis Mem Table 2 because that's being automatically generated. And we created a new, we called Mem Table again. So that's going to increment kind of an internal counter. Um, what else? What else? Let's do the performance comparison. So. I'm just going to generate some data to make sure it kind of has the scale that I care about. All right, this is not particularly interesting with respect to content, um, but it, it has sort of the size that I care about, which is like a grouping key that's low cardinality, and I'm going to do a summary on that. So with pandas, you can see, um, let's do a value counts on the path on, uh, let's sorry, let's do a value counts on B. And we'll see that took about two, two, you know, about three seconds, right? So let's throw that in a mem table. And let's do the same thing. Since Ibis has value counts, we can just do that again. And we see it actually took, you know, 800 microseconds, right? Um, so that's like, that's pretty fast, right? So we've got you know, 2.92 seconds. It's like, how many microseconds is that? Well, times a million, you know, divided by 794 microseconds. Um, so somehow this is like way, way fast. I, I don't actually trust that this is the case. Um, I think there might be, right. Okay, so you actually need to execute it. Probably some interesting stuff happening in IPython there. Uh, and now we have like a much more sort of reasonable timing. Um, 800 nanoseconds would yeah be about 36, 3700 times faster, and that doesn't seem reasonable. Um, so if we look at so if we do the comparison now, now we're in milliseconds. So let's multiply by a thousand on the on the numerator. And now we we see that this like sort of simple computation that you know you'd think might be pretty fast uh, in a system like pandas. Um, it's, it's leaving some, some performance on the table here. You know, we've got, uh, it's 25 times faster. Um, so look out for um, this feature in IBIS 3.2. Um, it's going to be pretty killer. Um, you should be able to use these mem tables kind of wherever IBIS kind of accepts a table expression as input. So for example, like in a join. And that's the that's the end of the stream. Just wanted to show that off um, before we launch, before we release 3.2. Uh, so thanks everyone for watching, and I will catch you.